We're already in the third week of October and we've got a great week in review for you here at Shepherds. On Monday, we featured Love's Pure Light Scarves, Canadian made, created with love by Sydney. And then on Wardrobe Wednesday, it was about the reversible faux fur coat. We have a few left. And then Fashion Friday has become a tradition now. Every season, we like to feature one size pieces. Finally, Coffee Talk, you will meet Astrid Pergel, who has done the Camino and what an experience and trek it's been. Enjoy the segments and shop the collections up here. Welcome to this week's Shepherd's Finishing Touches. I'm Elaine. And I'm Lisa. And we have a very special collection of scarves today to show you. So amazing, so artistic. You're going to love them. Mm -hmm. They're from a, a lively line called Love's Pure Light. We've got lots of styles to show you and different ways on how to wear them. Absolutely. Great tips. And here we go. Mm -hmm. We're starting with uh, original works of art. Yes. And each scarf has its own card with a message of positivity and a little note about why the scarf was created, right? The inspiration. The Absolutely. inspiration. The scarves are made of 70% modal, 30% silk. And Lisa, you had, you were saying that the more you manipulate them. Yes. When you first get them, they're going to be quite uh, a little stiffer, but the more you work them and the more you, they actually get nicer the longer you have them. Oh, fantastic. And the heat of your body, it, it makes them conform and really soften up. Oh, beautiful. So the first style we're showing you is called the golden apple. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> this has been just flying off the shelves. Mm -hmm. This is a coloration of gold and grays. And you can see here how this large scarf pairs down so beautifully. Exactly. It's so malleable. It really is from the moment you receive it. Then, and then, as you mentioned, it does really soften. Teresa wears her scarf like this. So it's a little jabot at the front, and she just does a tie and let the tails trail down at the I back. Love, I love this. Mm -hmm. This one's called Gold and Black Leaves, and it's a, a tribute to Canadiana. Wow. Our next one is? Yes, called the Hummingbird. The so Hummingbird. It's, it's all about color here, right? Um, wow. Yes. And so this is kind of fun. So we're going to create a little shrug with this. So it was a little breezy. We were so thrilled that it, there was a breeze outside, but it turned out to be a heavy breeze. So, But we, we were able to work this. So just create a knot on each side. And there we go. Oh, that looks so pretty. Right? Look at the color in this. Mm -hmm. They're actually paintings that are sort of... Uh, side by side, and then they're 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 printed on this fabric. Oh, you can see the gorgeous color. Beautiful. Wow, this one is a bestseller. It's called the Un uh, Universal, mm -hmm. and it's a celestial sky in neutrals. Mm. Oh, uh, it's what do you say? What do you say? <laughs> and I mean, I love the length on this because you can see how you could just drape it over the shoulder over a longish coat, and it just adds fun. And then of course it does become quite practical. Wear it, tie it around the neck right around uh, with a coat and as you said it warms up to your body yes it does mm. uh, and you had mentioned here Sydney the mm -hmm. the designer she actually wears her scarves looped like this like mm -hmm. like a little kind of cozy collar yes uh, like a turtleneck style right it's Beautiful. different it's 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 new and then um, this one is called abide in the vine so the creator actually worked in wine country here in Ontario, wow. I believe, and it's kind of so that you're going to see there's goats in there and animals and trees and a little bit of everything. Her hidden Canadiana. Oh, yes. You have to hunt for it. <laughs> yes. And easy, I like this look. And then, of course, if you want to show more of the scarf, every time you wear it, you're seeing a different uh, coloration here. What Combinations. Yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It depends how you position it. And look at the border. I always love a scarf with a border because it does create different Yes. Different looks. This is called Forever Yours Canada. Sydney has gifted us the original of this. We have it in store. Beautiful. And here are the bright colors. And this actually does have the message as well that unfolds all throughout the border here along the eyelash border. Here's Teresa wearing it. We always get asked, how do you wear a scarf? It's as simple as this. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Just very simply wrapped around the neck and mm -hmm. easy, right? You can wear mm -hmm. it casually. It looks great with this little dress. Doesn't it? The Our uh, dress from Gilmore, the bamboo dress. So we're talking about bamboos and silks and modal, so all kind of natural fabrics. Ah! Oh, now my heart stops when I see this. Mm -hmm. um, for the horse lover in your life, this is just, this is called Steadfast. 
a galloping horse, just beautiful. Beautiful. But when she puts it on, you can't really tell it's a horse. It's just the colors. Yeah, it's like abstract strokes, beautiful, right? Beautiful, beautiful broad strokes. And it's strokes. like an outline illustration of something. So you want to know more. You want to feel more about this. And look at it wrapped up. Wow. Yes. And the light, she's brought quite a bit of the light to her face, which mm -hmm. is lovely and opened up the neck. Mm hmm Stunning. I love this one. This is Royal Fleur in the bright in the bright blue. Yes, yes, this one is. Wow, look at the colors. Oh. If you need a pop of happiness, this is your scarf. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So just take it like so, okay, bring your points to the back and bring a point oh. or two to the front. Look at that. And again, you've lengthened the look of whatever you're wearing. And right. you've, you've added, right, oh, color. So much color to the face. And even with this uh, more neutral color, it adds a pop, right? Mm -hmm. It works really nicely. Absolutely, yeah. We're, I'm so happy, again, we were able to film outdoors so you can really see those colors. Same royal fur, this time in a more muted coloration, kind of eggplant tones. Beautiful. I love the, what Teresa's done here with the scarf. Just a simple square, right? Mm -hmm. What would you call that, Elaine? Yes, yeah, kind of just folded you like know, a, on its own a uh, number of times. And then again, it's a simple jabot, keeping it classic. It. That's so pretty and classic and tailored. Mm -hmm. Looks fantastic on Teresa. I, and we think it'll look fantastic on you. Would make Absolutely. a great gift as gift season is coming yes. upon us, right? And they're available in store and more importantly, shepherdsfashions.com because you can get to see the full collection. So we hope that you enjoyed our finishing touches. Welcome to Shepherd's Wardrobe Wednesday. Yes, it's around the corner. That weather, snow is flying in many parts of Canada. But today we wanted to focus on our real, we call this one of our style steels, but is so perfect for Canadian weather. This is a reversible coat faux fur, but Elaine, it feels it feels real when you have it on. It touch. feels real and it looks real. The luster is there, as you can see here out in the sunlight. Loving the, uh, the length as well. It's a knee length coat. So easy in and out of cars, wear it with mm. pants or a dress. Yes. So here it is on the plush side of mm. life. And it has the hoodie, which is great. It has a very elongated sleeve margin, so you can undercuff it, overcuff it, and it'll keep you warm. And it's, as you can see, snaps. Easy. That's easy to get in and out. Up, right. It has the hood. Mm -hmm. And uh, then look at, you reverse it to the more of the nylon side. Mm -hmm. So you've got the cozy full fur touching your body on the inside yes. and so maybe it's a little bit more of a casual look so great coat if you're going away for a weekend right exactly you wear this with real jeans and sporty looking reverse it for more of a, mm -hmm. a more of a dramatic evening look after yes. five yes it I, I really enjoy that nylon kind of look and here so here we're showing you how you can just cuff it and it adds a lovely little interesting accent to Perfect. the coat. Perfect, yeah, like a fur cuff. Mm -hmm. So it was um, $179, and it's now $125.30 for the coat. So lots and lots of value here. This mm -hmm. is a great uh, winter coat mm -hmm. um, for most parts of the region. I mean, yes. you know, it's not a downfield coat, um, and it's not real fur, but it's still ready for winter. This is the other color, mm -hmm. and it's sort of a burgundy wine shade. Yes, with a... You know, a little bit of eggplant, and it's shown here on Geneva. So she is f uh, just over five feet tall. She's wearing the size medium because, oh, look how pretty it is with the, uh, it, it really is a real hood, mm -hmm. uh, right? It has pockets on both sides of it, mm -hmm. okay, showing you again that lovely coloration. And uh, in terms of sizing, she's wearing the size medium. She likes uh, things that are a little slimmer uh, across the body, so that's, that's why snugger. she went a little snugger. But it is a straighter cut jacket. Mm -hmm. What size are you wearing, Elaine, when you um, have it on? I went to the large because I wanted it to be a little over, a little oversized if you're going to wear it with an it. And here I've belted it. Well, you're brave. Well, you're I thought, brave. It, you know, because yeah, it gives sure. it a little more shape. Yeah. And Stephanie is also in the large. It is shaped, as you can see. It has, yeah, it has a little bit, yes. Yeah. at the back. And I love it because it really takes accessories beautifully. Yes. So I love just a splash of color mm -hmm. uh, It is a glove or a scarf or the animal print, which is very on trend. Mm -hmm. So, and we have a lot of those online now. They're, they're, it is the season. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it protects you for um, Canada's winters. It does. And it is available in sizes small to XXL at the moment. These won't last long. I mean, consider the price point here, which is Geneva again, at this time in the black. And again, you can see the luster here. That's what we love about it is that beautiful no, texture. It is top quality faux fur. Mm -hmm. Adorable hat with the pearl trim yes. and the little fur pom-pom and the little... Um, 
kind of a faux yeah. mitt fingerless faux fingerless gloves to match with the pearls yes. there's some really gorgeous accessories for winter mm -hmm. online all kinds of great colors uh, with lots of bedazzles on them so thank you for joining us this wardrobe wednesday and please join us on fashion friday Welcome to Shepherd's Fashion Friday. Today we're talking about stylish clothes that have lots of color, lots of coziness to it, but you know what? They're mostly all one size. This is a seasonal tradition now in our <laughs> Fashion Friday videos. People love it when it's one size. People love it because, you know, again, there's a cozy comfort. So new pieces like this one from Gilmore. My favorite top of the season. Mm -hmm. It is just the right length, especially worn with skirts or these new crop pants, mm -hmm. which I'm in love with. But look at this top cozy fabric but here we have it all tucked in mm -hmm. and it just you know you blouse it a little bit mm -hmm. and then it has a very cozy feel it's only 98 dollars nice boat neck yes has that kind of faux animal three-quarter sleeve mm -hmm. but here we're going to do the half tuck where you leave it tucked in in the front we can really show off this belt that's attached to the pant mm -hmm. um and then you can do a half half tuck right, like <laughs> a little side tuck yeah, right? where you just show the belt mm -hmm. um which is really nice i love this it's a very modern look this is what you're seeing in all the fashion magazines and everything yes. this is the other style mm -hmm. So uh, animal print again reigns supreme here and add a shorter necklace on this. The comfort level, as you can see, is amazing. Hope you can see that through the screen. And again, it's short, so it allows you to tuck or not, as we've mentioned. The, the pant is a crop pant. We'll talk more about this. It's a, it's a new find for us. It's Joseph Ripkoff, $118, Marlene. Oh, it's my favorite pant of the season. I love it. The it's kind of like bag. a crepe. Now, here's Geneva. She's mm -hmm. five foot one. So mm -hmm. we really wanted to show you that these one style pieces are on all heights yes. and most all sizes right up to many up to size 14 or 18 or or 20 but this has a bit of mauve in it yes. right purple and black and so we we're showing you a different way to wear it here geneva's wearing it with an i uh nyd day jean you know <laughs> what i mean daughter's jean right yes. and now here's another piece from um gilmore so again this is kind of a it's a soft bamboo-ish kind of texture to it burgundy is the color not amazingly rich i mean it's you know it's a sweatshirt that's got so much style mm -hmm. and again it's not overwhelming on her because no. she's petite it's almost like a little dress wear it with jeans or you like you say or leggings it's double pocket yes um again canadian made mm -hmm. and it's 173 dollars mm -hmm. lots and lots of style here swing out sister that's what it's all about a piece with movement there you are you're five nine you're mm -hmm. wearing it with the thunder pant that is yes. sized the jean and you know what i think this top would fit marlene up to a size 16 if you are easily no i right? think even an 18 there's it is yes. a very generous cut mm -hmm. but it just flows nicely um mm -hmm. on a more petite and here it is in this blue and it's a lovely blue it's not a deep it navy is. but it's more of a violet blue right if you're at the cottage again you want to do it with a legging you yep. can now okay the Ooh. drama piece this yes. is a again another canadian made it's a hundred and forty eight dollars it's that speckled um black and gray kind of looks mm -hmm. like a little bit but animal print but i like the way you did this you styled it with the tight skirt yes the joseph ripkoff skirt uh, well one of our forever pieces and just a nice long necklace is all you need there's a raciness to this mm. and it is high cut as you can see so you need a tank and a proper bottom to wear with it it's got an 80s appeal which is so on trend at the moment as well but the casual comfort is there 148 dollars Mm -hmm. Now again, from our Canadian Gilmore collection, this is a poncho that comes in three different plaids. It's a poly blend. I think this makes a great gift idea because oh, yes. you throw this over uh, anything, a sweater, a sweatshirt, mm -hmm. um, a top, whatever you want, worn with the gray jeans uh, from yes. up. Mm -hmm. And the, the top you're going to see in a few different colors, it is new to us. And again, it's that cozy, comfortable feel. I'm mm. wearing the same top. Same poncho, different colorations here with that Joseph Ripkoff uh, skirt. I love these because you know that adds that third layer. Mm -hmm. It gives you the coziness and the warmth, but your hands are free that you can still work. I mean, whether you're at a desk or, or, you're, or you're just casually out with friends on the weekend. Yes. But again, you've taken that long skirt. Now, this is the top. Yes. Now you can see it clearly. Mm -hmm. First time we're showcasing this top um, and different colors. Again, you're going to notice the high-low hem. It has a straight-edged hem, rounded neckline, full-length um, uh, uh, sleeve on that. But it's all about. It's a basic layering piece. It's so a fabulous it, piece, right? It's an essential. Yeah. 
like here it is again in the red so it's a hundred and ten dollars again mm -hmm. Canadian made it's rayon from bamboo mm -hmm. um, and I, I love the way we've just sort of tossed this beautiful hand embroidered wool poncho mm -hmm. that again look it has every color on it so if you love color and pattern this is a great piece but I like these basic this tunic you can really accent it with um, br bright colors right. or patterns or you can be very sophisticated and it can go to work. Absolutely. Now this this is a piece that you should gift yourself, okay? This poncho, we've, we've shown it before. It's, well, it's the colors. It's mesmerizing. From yeah. the moment you put this on, you are going to have a great day. It's $236 <laughs> and we only have a couple left. Mm -hmm. Now, this is uh, the sweatshirt from mm -hmm. Gilmore. We, yes. this is, we can't keep these in stock and they keep making them for us because yes. they are amazing. The quality is there mm -hmm. and it, again, has that sweatshirt um, feel. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but you can dress it up or dress it down. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of colors. They're all online. You saw it in red. Now here it is in rosewood. I love how we've layered here, tiered the necklaces uh, to make it very soft. And again, just on a jean, it's easy. Want to take it to work? Wow. Do it again with Look the Joseph Look at there's, there's that long skirt again. Look, at, can you right. imagine taking a sweatshirt like that mm -hmm. uh, to, to the office? Yes. And it does look really good. I, I like the little... Um, quarter tuck you've got there, the mm -hmm. little neckerchief that you love, mm -hmm. the little pop of color. Now here it is in the heather gray, which yes. is a good basic, mm -hmm. and you're wearing it with the crop pant. Yes, that Joseph Rippoff, uh pant we love, $118, and this scarf is amazing. That's another great gift idea because you're going to see it reverses. It's I like a shawl. It, yeah, yeah, you can wear it like a shawl, mm -hmm. or if you have a, you know, muffle it around you with a, with a um, coat. Yes. You can, showing you here again the, the reversible colors in this. So black, white and black have not, never looked so great. Uh, there's a sophistication refinement to mm -hmm. this as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great gift idea. Yes. So this is a Charlie B. This is a color block sweater. Again, a one size item. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have us. Yes, a new model, Adriana. Yes. Thank you so much for modeling. Uh, she was in the store attending one of our events uh, in uh, fundraisers, and we asked her to come model, and uh, she loves this top. So we have this in a pink coloration as well. I, I said, what color would you like to wear? She said, of course, the revved up red. Yeah. And then she loved this as well, the poncho from Boris. This is fringed, mm -hmm. uh, made in Europe. It's $113. comes in this lovely kind of speckled purple and also yes. kind of a gray black. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I find these tops are perfect for the rinks. I know, I remember uh, when my son was playing hockey, this would be perfect to sit in the stands or mm -hmm. go to a hockey game in it. You know, it's casual, but still very chic. Yes, and I love the little pop of color underneath it, again, from that box top that we've just showed you. This is fleece. So it will keep you warm, and it has mm. an actual sleeve to it yep. uh, that we have undercuffed here, so you can wear the sleeve different ways, wear a glove with it, and then Boris coats. Uh, you know, these are winners every year. We just mm -hmm. They're so hard to get, so they are a one size. I wear it, and I'm a size 18. I have the one on the right. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, this is where you can really you can wear color here if you want yes. because they're machine washable. Oh, wonderful. And they're lightweight. They're beautiful quality fleece, and I love the designing to this. They have mm -hmm. those generous collars, the little detail, the funky detailing. You can kind of see, look at the little nipping at the hem yes, and the, at the sleeve, the buttons. Um, that big oversized pocket so you can put everything in there. Um, this striped one has one, been one of our favorite popular ones. I like this kind of ivory eggshell tone, if you will, and the, the collar again is ruched, so it really will keep you warm and cozy and cuddly. And again, those oversized pockets are great. This is a longer piece. Okay. Look at the how blue, the how blue. vibrant that blue is. Mm -hmm. Now, how refreshing, how nice is that? You know, in those dreary winter days to throw on an electric blue. Again, lo notice this funky detailing in the collar, yes. um, repeated in, around the uh, pocket, mm -hmm. and a generous hood. Right. So, you know, all of these pieces are online, Marlene. Mm -hmm. So if you want to shop them, take a better look at them as well, and price points and, and so on. Yeah, because they do, do vary. They're under 400. Many of these are 238. Mm -hmm. um, very well priced. Great. So our question for you today, would you like to win a $50 gift card that you can use at Shepherds Online or in store? So we'd like to know. We have other style segments that we present weekly, like Wardrobe Wednesday and Finishing Touches, usually on Monday. So we'd like to know, do you watch them? Do you have any suggestions on what you would like to see and how we could improve them? Love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us here at Shepherds Fashions and Train Yards in Ottawa or shepherdsfashions.com. 
Welcome everyone to this week's Shepherd's Coffee Talk. My name is Elaine Charon. I am here in replacement of Marlene, who is on a, a beautiful trip at the moment. I'm here with Kathy Donovan, Good morning. Our regular co-host, mm -hmm. and special guest Astrid Pregel. Good morning. Astrid Pregel was for a long time in the Foreign Service, traveled and lived all over the world, acting as a diplomat, well not acting as a diplomat, being diplomatic on behalf of Canada. And when she retired, she founded a company called Feminomics. What would you describe feminomics as briefly, Astrid? It's really all about uh, eliminating world poverty by economically empowering women. So that means more money in more women's pockets. Oh, a noble cause for sure. Yes. And then in her spare time, Astrid decided to walk the Camino Santiago. Now, Elaine, you know someone who's yes. done this adventure. Mm -hmm. And you know that it is something that's in a person's blood. It's like going to a mountain. You've got to do this thing. So Astrid, we wanted to talk to you about your experience on all the levels that you experienced it. And then I think before we get into the actual walk, let's talk about how a person prepares for such an mm. endeavor. How did you prepare? Well, for me, I first, I was on a train between Rabat and uh, Fez in Morocco in the mid nineties and met a very interesting French couple who had just walked this Camino and who were so enthusiastic that you know, immediately went to the library, got the only book I could find on it, <laughs> mm. and decided you know, that was something that I really wanted to do. But it is, if you do the whole Camino, it's over 800 kilometers, mm. it's a big endeavor. Mm -hmm. So when I was looking mm. at the fact that my 65th birthday was coming, mm -hmm. I decided that, you know, this is something just big enough to really celebrate and to set the framework and the groundwork for whatever the next iteration of my life right. was going to be. So that was the framework. So I did have a problem with a foot and so I knew I couldn't walk 800 kilometers so I got it operated on one year exactly before the date that I wanted to leave because wow. they said it would take one year to heal <laughs> and I hired the best trainer I could find in Ottawa and I worked out right here at the Movadi gym three days a week with mm -hmm. the trainer mm -hmm. and I was ready so how? that's the kind of sort of physical yeah. preparation yeah, yeah. Yes. but how do you get your mind okay. around I mean so, that, that's an overwhelming concept for the human mind 800 kilometers yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so there were two very major important pieces of information <laughs> that I came across that made me sort of say, okay, this thing is doable. Number one, you don't have to carry a backpack for 800 kilometers. Ah. Uh -huh. So original pilgrims who walk this Camino do it for spiritual purposes and they're carrying, I mean, it, it, people have been walking this Camino for over a thousand years. Hmm. So people used to carry everything that they needed, and there's still quite a tradition, especially younger people with good backs, you know, who are carrying everything. And, but when I learned that there were services that would deliver it from town to town, mm -hmm. I thought, ah, oh, that's a pretty big impediment. Makes it doable. Mm -hmm. That's doable. Yeah. And then what I also learned later is that the, or as I was doing the investigation, that there are <clears throat> tiny towns, villages, and as I found out when I was there, exquisitely beautiful villages all across the Camino. And they all have taxis. So if you get really past your, what your ability is, you just call a cab. <laughs> when I wow. Figured, <laughs> wow. Okay. When I figured those two <laughs> things out, I thought, how bad can this be? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, you, worse comes to worse, somebody's carrying my stuff. Right. Worse comes to worse, I call a cab. Yes. You know, and it, maybe that's not... You know, maybe the ego wasn't. I thought, you no, know, ego, you just sit yeah, there. Thank it's, you very much. That's, that's fine. That's I can beautiful. do this. So, so, so this is kind of a self-guided journey, if you will. It's not. It's not a tour with a tour oh, guide. Oh, you can do everything. You can do everything. You yes. can take tours. You mm -hmm. can go with guides. But I didn't. I mean, my whole goal was to really meditate on mm. what it was. Mm. You know, where did I come to? Where did I want to go? How was I going to do it? What was my strength? How much courage did I have? You know, what was the next What's my new 15, why? 15, 20 yeah. Yeah, years <laughs> going to look like? 
And so I really set out to, that's why I walked alone. I didn't really want company. And as it turned out, it's hard to walk alone on the Camino. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because everybody, I mean, there are many, many people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. They're all excited. They all want to know why you're doing it and tell you their story. And so I really had to work at it to stay alone. And um, I did have mantras that I chanted, either to myself or out loud, depending on who was around, <laughs> the whole way across the Camino. And that really was to sort of anchor my process and to stop, you know, some of that superfluous thinking that, mm -hmm. you know, it's constantly that chatter that's constantly going on in your mind. Right. So, you know, the, the, the purpose of the mantras were really just sort of clear some space to really let, let emerge what was to emerge. Now, let's, let's talk a little about the history of the Camino, if you don't mind, because it is and has been a spiritual um, pilgrimage for many, many people. Right. Do you, can you tell us why that particular route is well, so special? It, um, you know, it evolved, you know, the, the history tells us that it likely was a, pa a pagan pilgrimage route uh, originally. Uh, what it's characterized by now is really Catholicism. Mm -hmm. uh, that part of Spain, of course, all of Spain originally was uh, very Catholic. And so it runs really through, um, I think, personally, my sense was that there was a lot of very special energy along that Camino. I mean, you figure for over a thousand years, <laughs> mm -hmm. people have been walking that Camino. Mm -hmm. And up until fairly recently, the data showed us that there were more people in the Middle Ages who were walking this wow. than even now. And now there's at least 300,000 who walk it every summer. Wow. So you can imagine mm -hmm. uh, what it must have been. I and mean, you know, now we have cell phones and taxis and <laughs> yeah. delivery services. Yeah, right. But back then they had bandits, mm -hmm. right. you know, and war right. going on and right. poverty. And so originally, the kind, Queen Isabella want, walked the Camino because she wanted children and she didn't have children. And after the Camino, she actually bore children. So, you know, some people have a very specific goal like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes right. it was, certainly in the Middle Ages, you know, someone who committed a crime, you know, they would be told to walk the Camino to repent mm -hmm. because it really mm -hmm. was quite an arduous uh, journey. Right. Um, I met many, many people for who everybody was there for a reason. Everybody mm -hmm. was looking for a challenge, an opportunity to face something to digest something, to mm -hmm. figure something out. Some people were there, they just weren't even 100% sure why, but they were you know, really being driven. And then I think there are people who are there as tourists. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, you can, you can go in a bus, yeah. they'll drop you off somewhere, you walk five kilometers, right. the bus picks you up. Like, you know, it's for everybody, right. and yes. everyone does it in, in their, their own, own way. way. And, Speaking mm -hmm. of way, have you seen the movie? Yes. About the Camino? Yes. It's called The Way, isn't it? The Way, the yes way. it yeah. is. What did it's, you think? It's a one, uh, and you know, actually it's interesting, uh, my partner really insisted that I watch it because I didn't watch it before I went. And so I actually just watched it last week. <laughs> and um, I loved it. And you know, there's a few Hollywood elements in it, mm. but basically what they're showing is accurate. Wow. And what I particularly loved, of course, is the landscape. The landscape is beyond belief. Mm. There's all these medieval villages and you know, so you have your breakfast normally in the little hostel where you stay and then, you know, the next little village is 5k away so you have, you know, some kind of nice little cookies and tart and then by the next time it's usually lunch time and then you're ready for either an early glass of wine or another cup of coffee if you need some kind of reinforcement and so you really, you know, you really get to connect with the villagers and the village life because here's the other thing, for over a thousand people years, over a thousand years, those people along the Camino from generation to generation to generation have been taking care of pilgrims. Hosted pilgrim pilgrims. Oh, wow. That's so, Astrid, so did you feel safe as a woman traveling absolutely. along? Absolutely. Absolutely, I country. felt safe. There oh, was good. not one moment mm -hmm. when I felt that there was any danger. The only physical danger I felt was a bit in the Pyrenees. We were, I was fortunate when I went over. It was beautiful weather. Uh, some of those inclines are really steep. Uh -huh. So had it been muddy, you know, I might have been right. a little worried. Right. But it was sunny. And I did have walking sticks. It's something I learned to use before I went. Uh, usually I had them folded up, hung on my backpack. Mm -hmm. But there mm -hmm. were a few moments like that in the, in the Pyrenees. So you need to really, st uh, 
you know, I'm a left brain dominance, study <laughs> data kind of person. So uh, I had read every book there was. I had been to lectures. I had seen everything on the internet on how to treat blisters and how to avoid yes. them. Mm. So, you know, I was pretty well prepared. I right. mean, I could mm. see, and I had a whole kit. And so I was, you know, I would often minister, especially <laughs> younger people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those students who were there for, you know, summer walk or whatever, who had done less research and who didn't have right. all the equipment with them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you were a real blessing to them, for <laughs> sure. Um, go ahead, Eli. Oh, well, I understand that you also had something for a special event or something. Oh, yes. You, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, this is, the, this is the really funny part. So, you know, you didn't want, to, because I was having somebody carry my, you know, somebody, it's a service, they send your luggage mm -hmm. from place to place. So I could have taken the whole luggage, you know, suitcase full of stuff, but I didn't because of course it's a pilgrimage and, you know, many people are carrying their own things, so I wanted to fit in, I did, you know. So I thought, okay, I can take one thing only for nighttime. Like I had three changes of clothes that were quick dry, mm. you know, just mm -hmm. in case one didn't dry and all that, because you know, at the end of the day, after walking 20, 25 kilometers, you need to, to wash whatever it was you were wearing. So I had picked one outfit. And so I was looking for something that I could fold up, something that looked fabulous on me, something blue. I love blue. I guess. Uh, something that wouldn't wrinkle, something that I could wash and hang. And, and so what I took was something I brought here from Shepherds. <laughs> so it was the most exquisite <laughs> pair of flowered leggings that had blue in them that many people have tried to buy off my legs sometimes. <laughs> And a simply navy, blue, uh, light blue, you know, this, almost this color blue, yes. you know, where the shoulders are sort of cut out. Yes. You know, and mm -hmm. it's a little bit long, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. elegant. Mm -hmm. So I wore that every single night for 40 nights. <laughs> <laughs> so Shepherds actually went to the Camino. Yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> and I bet it still looks as good as new. It does. It does. I still wear it. I, mean, I debated about wearing it today, and I thought, not today, I felt more like this one. So <laughs> fantastic, that's good. And, and just one last thing, Astrid, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, because part of the process of going to the Camino is to really get that why, to get some clarity for your life. And I know you have been through some challenging times we discussed in the past, your husband dying suddenly and you being out in the desert trying to figure life out. So can we have an update on what's happened yeah. since? So. Um you know, part of, it was part of the healing process. It was uh, three years after my husband died suddenly. Um, you know, when someone dies like that, that you're so close to, I mean, I had been meditating for years already and I was already interested in those questions. Mm -hmm. But when it happens like that and you look at someone and you know it looks exactly like them, but something's gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think for me that experience just, it was as clear as a bell that, you know, we're energetic beings in a physical body. Mm -hmm. And that, that opens to so many questions. Okay, well if that's true, who am I really then? And what is it I'm going to do? And, and so for me that whole walk on the Camino with the chanting and making the space where I really came to, because my expertise is all about the economic empowerment mm -hmm. of women. Mm -hmm. But what I came to realize was that the next frontier for me was really how to empower women by bringing in that whole spiritual aspect. So that's where I, what I'm mm -hmm. still working on is building the bridge between the knowing uh, of the spirit, mm -hmm. you know, into trying to bring it surely to God. There's not too many women I know who would agree that they would have created the capitalistic system quite the way it is. Right, you are. So <laughs> when you look at the spiritual aspects and the feminine, and this is, can be the feminine within men also. Yeah. It's not only a yeah. female in a female body. But when you look at those feminine principles within the spiritual realm, I think it gives you kind of a guidance as to you know what might an economic system be like mm -hmm. that would fully nurture and support all of humanity. And women are the key to finding that forward because at this moment in time, you know, we have the most of that feminine spiritual energy. Absolutely. So that's what I'm working on now. I love that. And then one last little detail that you didn't mention. That was very important what you just said. Very important. You have a new partner. I have a new partner. <laughs> so there is so much hope for all of us, mm -hmm. regardless of what happens in life. 
I think Astrid is really the embodiment of this idea of, you know, coming into our own, coming into ourselves in midlife. That's when your new chapter begins, and I'm right. so happy for you. Thank so you. So happy thank for you. you. Happy yeah. to meet Kevin, too. And that's really what... Um, I'm going to start to cry here, but the, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, you know, I knew that I wanted another partner, but I, I you know, and, and sometimes the universe just drops things in front of you that you can't even imagine. Yes. So I didn't want to imagine too specifically, <laughs> but, you know, clearly, clearly it's the perfect match Pretty specific. for the next. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's someone who's also just enormously spiritually evolved person with some really clear ideas and superb values. And dropped very in your... sexy too. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. And well, dropped in your lane at just the at right just time. To that. <laughs> cheers, cheers to you, Astrid Preggles. Yes. And thank cheers you. to you. you Enjoy you your both. day.